Good morning, Northwest Morning Sprint is brought to you by Bill's Heating and Air Conditioning. 6.52 is your time. We are getting you ready to take on your Wednesday here in the Morning Sprint. And Mark Peterson has gusty winds and warm temperatures in the forecast. But first, let's go to Lydia Roberts tracking new developments in the presidential election this morning. Well, right now, millions of ballots are still being counted across the country, but it looks like the race is coming down to three key battleground states, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. Late last night, Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf tweeting that his state had more than one 1 million ballots to be counted. But the state's attorney general says it's way too early to call. And this morning, Michigan's Secretary of State tweeted election officials in her state were counting ballots through the night and they're not done yet. A late burst of votes in Wisconsin gave Biden a small lead in the state, but it's still too early to call. Wisconsin officials telling ABC News they expect the statewide results to come in as early as today. Good Morning America is covering all angles of this election and what will be critical to determining the outcome. GMA starts in just a few minutes. And breaking news out of Austria this morning, two men connected to a deadly terror attack are in jail. That attack happened Monday in the Austria, uh, Austrian capital. At least four people were killed, 22 injured, including a police officer who is now in stable condition. In election news, the expected vote in Pennsylvania continues to stay at 75% of ballots counted, with Trump still holding on to a sizable lead of around 678,000 votes. In the swing states of Michigan and Georgia, President Trump's lead is dwindling this morning. He he and Vice President Biden are neck and neck with about 86% of the votes returned in Michigan. In Georgia, the president still maintaining a 2% lead with about 92% of precincts reported. We will continue following the presidential race in the coming days, but let's get caught up on some of the other local races we know results of at this point. Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers won the ninth, a ninth term. She is leading Democratic challenger Dave Wilson with 59% of the vote. Wilson conceded just after 915 last night. In Idaho, voters in Kootenai County rejecting a measure that would add a new fee to car tabs. It was meant to help fund construction projects throughout the county. So far, 64% of voters are saying no. And in the race for a new Kootenai County Sheriff, candidate Bob Norris is leading the way with about 64%. Voters in Washington have officially approved referendum 90, though. The sex education bill, as you can see, 60% of voters statewide are in favor of it so far. That means public schools will now have to implement a comprehensive sex ed curriculum. Much like the governor's race, voters in Spokane County do not agree with the rest of the state. 53% of voters rejected the bill in the county. But now that it's official, it's important to know that this really won't affect many districts around Spokane County much at all. Spokane Public Schools already has a sex ed curriculum in place, and there will be very little change for districts like Mead, Central Valley, and East Valley, among others. Parents will still have the choice to opt out of this curriculum. In Kootenai County, a record number of ballots and voter turnout even before the polls closed yesterday. Just over 90,000 ballots cast and voter, tur voter turnout topped out at 87%. It was a long and very eventful day at the polls. At Precinct 8 in Post Falls yesterday, which had the most registered voters, the line was out the door and wrapping around the parking lot. Then later in the afternoon, it started raining and people had to wait outside for an hour or so because election workers ran out of voter registration cards. The county eventually brought in new ones. Voters were happy with the turnout and election workers were relieved the busy day was over. The county also sent out three times as many ballots than in 2016. Remember, our coverage doesn't end with this newscast. We update races and results as soon as we get them into our newsroom on our website, kxy.com. If you're looking for results, can't miss them. This is a look at our homepage right now, the biggest state and local races and what the presidential race is up to. Head to kxy.com right now to check it out. All right, good morning. We had early morning uh, rain in our first alert weather. It's going to continue to be a chance of rain as we go into some of the mountains in around Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. We're going to get a nice break this afternoon, and then tomorrow we start to see this rain come in. That's going to be your Thursday and then into Friday morning, and then it looks much better after that. Outdoor activity today, get outside. It's going to be some clouds, 58 at lunch, 62 for our high today. Looking ahead today, second graders in the Central Valley School District return to in-person learning today. Half of the students will begin today. The other half start tomorrow in order to ease in students, and they all attend in person by Friday. Buses are running, but only at 50% capacity to encourage social distancing. Parents able to drop off and pick up their kids are encouraged to do so. Third graders are scheduled to start going back a week from tomorrow. 
And tomorrow, embattled Spokane County Health Officer Dr. Bob Lutz will get a chance to speak in front of the health board. The board is scheduled to meet to vote on Lutz's removal from his role as the county health officer. The health district's bylaws make it clear the health officer cannot be removed without a vote from the board of health. At that meeting, we are also expecting to hear from Health District Administrative, Administrative Officer Amelia Clark, who asked Dr. Lutz to resign last week. We will be there at 3 o'clock tomorrow to bring you the very latest information. All right, as we take a look outside above the Spokane Arena, we will get a check of the weather with Mark Peterson next.